Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this Life Sunday comes to us from Isaiah chapter 49, beginning with verse 13. Shout for joy, you heavens! Rejoice, you earth! Burst into song, you mountains! For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast, and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. This is our text. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord and giver of life, dear friends in Christ. The scriptures give us all an abundance of information about our triune God. And one of those things that we learn in our instruction in the Christian faith is a summary list of the attributes of God that are attested to in the Bible. That list includes gracious and merciful, faithful, and to the point of today's text, omniscient or all-knowing, omnipresent or present everywhere at the same time. And from both today's readings and from our confession of faith in the creed, he is the author and and giver of life. But what does all that mean for you and me today? Well, look at today's psalm reading, Psalm 139, that we shared earlier. God knows everything. That means he knows everything about each one of us. Jesus even says that the hairs of our head are numbered in today's gospel lesson, and he reminds us that God doesn't forget even the tiniest sparrows, and that we human beings are more valuable to God than many sparrows. God knows when each one falls out and how many of the hairs of our heads we have left after they fall out. But more to the point, he knows you and me inside and out. He knows every thought in our minds, the most noble ones and the most sinful ones. Before one word is on our tongue, he already knows what we will say, whether it be compassionate or hurtful, whatever that word is. And beyond all of that, God is everywhere. There can be no getting away from his presence. David in the psalm says that there is nowhere he can go that God can't find him out. He can't even hide in the darkness because darkness is as light to him and the night is as bright as day to God. Is all of this comforting or is it dread producing? It sure sounds like King David wishes he could hide away from God. Perhaps that's because he knows his sins and his guilt is so overwhelming to him. But he ends that psalm with the reassurance that God's works are wonderful, that God has formed him with his own hands, knitting him together and weaving his frame in the secret places of his mother's womb. Those images of God knitting and weaving are images of a loving and caring God who performs the work of of the greatest artisan, who created the whole universe. God is the source of David's life and of yours and mine. And he is the source of that life from before any of our days came into existence. And that loving care that God used to knit us together and weave together our frames has never stopped. Whatever was David's feelings whether guilt or fear, anxiety or dread, they were overwhelmed by wonder at the Creator God and God's love and compassion, grace and mercy. 
And that is the same for you and for me. We know our sin for sure. It is always before us, and Satan constantly reminds us of what poor excuses we are as Christians who are supposed to be living out our new life in Christ, serving as Christ's ambassadors, God making his appeal to a lost world through us. What poor excuses we are as we present our God's plan of reconciliation through Jesus and through his death and resurrection to all the world. And not only do we know our sinfulness, we also know that God knows our sinfulness, our darkest secrets and our deepest sinful thoughts and ways. And because God knows all of that, here's the good news. He promised a Savior. And he fulfilled that promise in the life and death and resurrection of his son, Jesus. And the Savior, Jesus, has brought you into full fellowship with his Father. Through the forgiveness of your sins, the full and total washing away of all your sins through his blood shed for you on the cross. In your baptism, you have been buried with Christ into his death and raised with him to live a new life. And that is who you are, alive in Christ, by grace through faith that he created in your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit that came to you in your baptism, that came to you through the power of his word. And it is all God's work. And that is why you can rejoice in the fact that God knows you inside and out. And that is why you can rejoice in the fact that God has sent his son Jesus to cover you with his own righteousness and cleanse you with his own blood inside and out. That is why you can rejoice in the fact that God is everywhere all at the same time. And that is why there, you can rejoice in the fact that there is no way you can get away from his loving presence, his protecting arms, his life-giving and encouraging voice that he speaks to you through his word, through his son. Even when you feel forsaken, even when you feel forgotten, the absolutely certain and sure reality is just the opposite of what those feelings say to you. You see, we sometimes in our humanity think of God as limited to what we as humans can comprehend or experience. So listen to what the prophet Isaiah says in today's Old Testament lesson and in the words of our text. Can a mother forget her baby and have no compassion for the child she has born? Well, our immediate answer to that is, of course she couldn't forget her child, or she couldn't stop loving the child that she gives birth to. But if we think about it, it is humanly possible for that to happen. And that's why we kind of also think that God could forget us, or that God could turn his back on us and have no compassion on us anymore. And Isaiah agrees with all of that, and then God says in the very next verse of our text that even though human mothers can forget, he, God, is beyond human experience. He is the creator far above his creation, even above us human beings, the crowning glory of his creation. And he will not forget his people. He will not forget you. Some people tie a string around their finger to help them remember something important. But God goes way beyond that. In the next words of our text, he says that he won't forget you because he has carved you into the palms of his hands. That image immediately brings to mind the nail prints in Jesus' hands. And that makes perfect sense. God looks at the hands of his son, those rich wounds yet visible above. 
And God the Father not only sees the price that Jesus paid to bring you back into a right and perfect relationship with him, but as he looks at the palms of his son's hands and sees the mark of the crucifixion there, he sees you. He sees you holy and righteous through the engraving that is in Jesus' hands. He sees you without spot or blemish. He sees his own precious child made precious in his sight through Jesus. And according to Paul in today's epistle lesson, he sees you as the place where he delights to dwell, his temple. And that is because his spirit dwells in you. Doesn't all of this tell us that our very life is precious to God? Our very life is God's precious gift to us. The life that we live, we live to God. That's what Paul tells us, because we belong to him. Our life has been bought, paid for by the price of his son. And if we and our brothers and sisters in Christ are God's temple, then we must treat one another as precious treasures in God's sight. We must give honor and glory to our great creator God by honoring him in our bodies in every period of our lives. Since our creator God knew each one of us before our birth, numbering our days and using his own hands to form us in the womb, let us encourage one another to rejoice in those preborn babies and boldly defend the rights of the preborn from the moment of conception onward. Since our all powerful God has promised to work all things together for good to those who love Him, let us look through the eyes of faith and point one another to our God who is at work beyond our human limitations and can change what to our human eyes looks like an impossibly bad situation to bring a child into and can change that into fertile ground for a blessed and grace-filled, joy-filled life in Christ, a witness to his eternal love. Since our all-knowing God has the days of our lives as well as the hairs of our head numbered and has promised never to forsake us, his dearly beloved people, let us go and let go of all of our attempts on the one hand to hold on to life in this world at all costs, and on the other hand, to give in to the ways of the world that calls for laws allowing people to decide when and how they will die. Instead, let us give it all into the hands of our loving God and Father, trusting that he knows what is best for us, how to make our times of suffering into times of blessing, and when it is best to call us home. And Paul gives us this encouraging word at the end of our epistle lesson. All things are ours. Our pastors and church leaders, the world, life, death, the present and the future, all of are ours. That means that God has made us stewards of all these things, giving them for us, for our use, you know, our service as his witnesses, as his ambassadors, as his workmanship created in Jesus Christ for works of service for us to do to his glory and for the good of our neighbor. Yes, all things are ours, and we are Christ's. That means that we are his body and he is our head. We are his temple, his dwelling place, built on the solid foundation of his word and with Jesus as our cornerstone. We are his sheep and he is our good shepherd who has laid down his life to make us part of his flock. Yes, all things are ours and we are Christ. And Christ is God's. By that, Paul means that 
He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And as Paul tells us in Ephesians 1, the Father put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So let us rejoice in the life that he has given us. Let us defend the life of each of our neighbors from conception to the grave. And let us give thanks to him who has given us a new life, even an eternal life, through Jesus Christ alone. In his name, amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.